No? Yeah. There we go. Well, good morning, everybody. And um, it's a warm welcome to Carrie Dominguez, our uh, speaker this morning. Um, I've spoken to a number of you about this uh, process that we're about to embark on, which is really important for CalPERS. Um, and it's our uh, board's self-evaluation. And I'm very proud of the fact that CalPERS has been committed to good board governance for years. Um, I think we have a reputation for um, being a leader in this field with corporate governance in our portfolio. <clears throat> and the reason is very simple, is because we see that um, boards of companies which are well governed, these boards oversee better performance. Risk management is more effective, value is driven, uh, when there are bumps in the road, uh, a well-functioning board is able to handle the challenge um, and make sure that the company returns to its path um, uh, and achieve its objectives. So our board for some years now has had a commitment to a self-evaluation every two years. And I'm just delighted that this year we are going to our um, old friends at the National Association of Corporate Directors We've been members of this organization for many years. Um, and NACD really is the leading organization in the United States, um, helping boards and their directors really fulfill their potential. Um, as members of NACD, CalPERS is able to draw on uh, many services that NACD offers. And one of them is facilitating self-evaluation. So, um, the reason for us inviting Carrie here today is she's going to be our faculty member from NACD. Um, we are very grateful for her making the time to go through this process with us. And what she's going to do this morning is explain how does a self-evaluation work? What does the typical uh, board go through? Um, and then what we're going to do with your feedback is actually tailor this process for CalPERS because we're quite a unique organization, not just by size, but we're quite complicated. Um, but I think this long-standing commitment to good governance that we have is really going to help us uh, get the most benefit out of this evaluation process. Um, I just would like to, um, if you'd be kind enough, just flip you to slide number three. Um, we'll go back to slide two when <laughs> Carrie starts. But um, I, as uh, introducing Carrie, just would like to um, uh, say a few words about uh, why we've um, chosen her to be our faculty member. Um, I think, first of all, Carrie has um, exceptional experience um, in board leadership. Um, she's on the board of um, more than one listed company, Manpower. Uh, but I think the other thing that Carrie brings for us is her experience in the public sector as well. So her leadership role um, with the Equal Opportunities Commission, with the Department of Labor, her understanding of the importance of issues like diversity and talent management, this is really um, bringing a blend of skills and experience for us at CalPERS of somebody who can really add value to the process. And I think the other thing is that um, I'm delighted to say Carrie also um, understands California. The way that CalPERS is governed is partly set out in the California Constitution, but it's also set and affected by um, certain state regulations as well. So understanding California, understanding the world that we're working in is a really important part of this process as well. So um, I'm also delighted to say that um, thinking about our investment philosophy, um, Carrie also sits on the board of one of the oldest and best established uh, investment funds, which is focused on sustainability and responsible investment. That's Calvert. Uh, so I think also uh, my, my sense about Carrie is that she really understands governance, not just because it's going to help us with risk, it's going to help us improve performance, but she understands that because of the values that we have at CalPERS, we're going to do this in a responsible manner. Um, so uh, finally, I would just say that um, Carrie has received numerous awards 
um, recognizing her tremendous contribution in the public sector, also in the corporate and the governance world at NACD. Um, we've, we've highlighted just a few of these. I don't think on one slide we can fit everything in, but um, I do think it's wonderful to have someone here who's been uh, acknowledged as one of the um, most influential Hispanic leaders in the country. Um, uh, and this is just a wonderful resource for us. So this meeting today is just to kick off the process um, for Carrie to explain how typically a self-evaluation works. And then we really want your questions, your input, um, so that as this process is tailored for CalPERS, we can really make sure we get the most benefit from it. So um, thank you. Uh, let me hand over to Carrie now, and she can take you through her slides. Thanks, well, Carrie. Well, thank you very much, uh, and not, not only for that very generous introduction, uh, and as you can tell, I've been fortunate to have length of years because it's been quite, quite, a, quite a journey. Not just thank you for that wonderful introduction, but also for all the work and the support uh, that you and the staff has given us as part of, uh, uh, as we prepare for this session, as well as for our subsequent work together. So thank you for that. Uh, and good morning, Madam President and members of the board. I am indeed delighted to be here. And on behalf of NACD, I want to thank you for the opportunity to work with you uh, in facilitating CalPERS self-evaluation process. Uh, I feel very privileged to, to do this uh, with you. Uh, and the reason for that is that uh, CalPERS really is a governance icon. Uh, it is a globally admired, highly respected uh, organization. Uh, and in fact, uh, it's one that's made the work of an ACD quite easier, much easier, uh, because you've led by example. You have shown that it's not just possible, but pivotal to the success of an organization to practice good governance. Uh, and so you've led by example. Uh, you have. Uh, you, you have uh, practiced what uh, lots of people preach but don't necessarily uh, conduct. Uh, and you've shown that you can do well by doing good. Doing good not just for your membership uh, and other stakeholders, but also uh, as by way of elevating the standards uh, that others can look to and emulate. So thank you, thank you for your leadership uh, and thank you for the opportunity, and I think the, the commitment to continuous improvement. As Anne said, uh, you have done board evaluations in the past, and so I think this reflects the fact that we're here together, reflects your commitment to continuous improvement, which is really the reason I'm here, and which is the essence uh, of a self-evaluation process. So thank you for that, and as Anne mentioned, the purpose uh, of our time together today is to walk you through the process that we're going to be undertaking over the next uh, few months uh, as you conduct a comprehensive review uh, of your performance and evaluation of your effectiveness. Not just at the full board level, but also at the committee level, at the individual level, uh, and as collaborators with management uh, in making sure that you execute your roles duties and responsibilities uh, uh, appropriately. So that's the whole essence of, of our time together uh, today. The, uh, the self-evaluation process will provide you with a, uh, with a framework for continually assessing your collective and individual contributions measured against the objectives and the goals that you have stated uh, to carry out the mission of your organization. So it's actually a benchmarking process and something that uh, NACD does and conducts quite, quite often. Uh, but I'm, again, I'm preaching to the choir because you know the process uh, very well. Uh, and I think that uh, what's really important here, the difference between what you've done before uh, is that uh, you now have an outside, independent, facilitator, and that would be me. Uh, and I'm drawing on all of the exceptional resources that NACD can provide. 40 years of research, of expertise that have been gained by working with hundreds and hundreds uh, of boards. Uh, let me just go on to the next or previous. Is this? Shall I? Oh. Ah. 
uh, thousands of members, 19,000 members, uh, 1,300 full boards. Uh, and so I'm privileged not just to represent me facilitating this, but to really to tap into all the resources that uh, NACD can offer a member uh, in carrying out this, this wonderful project. So thank you for that. I think it's particularly important to emphasize that uh, NACD has had a tremendously uh, special relationship with CalPERS over the years. Uh, in fact, I've had the privilege of serving on the NACD board with one of your uh, former executives, the general counsel, Rich Copes. Uh, and Rich was just uh, so instrumental uh, in uh, providing his intellect, his perspective, uh, to inform NACD and to use CalPERS as an example uh, on, at many levels. So it's been a really good relationship and uh, I want to make sure that what it is that you need in the process of the evaluation, uh, that we're responsive to, uh, to those needs. Uh, we've also have recognized CalPERS uh, on many occasions uh, by NACD for board leadership, board excellence, uh, and uh, appreciate, uh, again, your lead by, by example. I think about this, this is more than you need to know or you want to know about, about me. <laughs> I think what's really important here to say is that uh, I've done a number of these uh, self-evaluations. I've facilitated them. Uh, both privately owned companies, publicly owned companies. Uh, I've worked with agencies like the Securities and Exchange Commission uh, in uh, doing other kinds of board services uh, for them. Uh, and as part of my work as chair of the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission, uh, I am aware of, uh, you know, we, we worked on, the, we operated under the Sunshine Act, uh, and I'm uh, very aware of the Bagley Keene Act and the proceedings that drive uh, the structure for your organization. Uh, I, I think that the only other point I would, I would say, with re, and Anne brought it up with respect to, uh, uh, to Calvert. Now, Calvert is, uh, it's, is, is, an or, is a firm that actually has framed its uh, principles of responsible investing pretty much paralleling yours. They look at performance, research, engagement, and impact. And I think that can pretty much uh, also tell what, uh, what the focus. Uh, if you don't perform, it doesn't matter what else you do. You've got to produce for your members. And that's, that's the most important thing. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, you do it in a socially responsible, uh, sustainable manner. So that's very important. OK, so with that as a background, let's talk a little bit about the uh, the specifics uh, of this self-evaluation. Uh, I think this is kind of a process that's tantamount. Those of you who have been working with uh, human resources, and I know all of us have, is kind of a 360-degree feedback review. We're looking at your governance from the top down, from the bottoms up, sideways, and every which way to make sure that everything is in sync, that everything is fully integrated towards the common goal of delivering uh, value for your membership. That's the most important thing. So the self-evaluations are driven by the premise that to be a highly effective, high-performing board, it needs to have, A, the right people, the right culture, the right processes, the right issues, the right information, and the right follow through. And the whole purpose of the evaluation is to ask yourself these questions. Do we have the right people, the right culture in which the organization can thrive? That's going to be at the crux of everything that's going to drive uh, this evaluation. Uh, and the most important thing is the one clear objective that all of these questions will pose is to make sure that you get the guidance and oversight that you will need uh, to create superior long-term value uh, for your membership. So that's, that's the key thing, and that's what this whole purpose is about. So when we talk about do we have the right people, what exactly are we talking about? We, do we have the people with the right skill sets, with the right backgrounds, with diversity of views? You can have all kinds of diverse views as long as 
Those views <coughs> go to advance your ultimate objective, which is the membership value. So how do we do that? So do, do we have the right skill sets to do that? Do we have independent thinkers, the people that are independent-minded, that are independent thinkers, but at the same time work towards that unifying goal? Uh, you can disagree. I think I haven't been to any board that doesn't have different of perspectives, different points of view, but at the end of the day, it's the strength that that diversity brings when it is towards the common unifying force of, uh, of creating, adding value. Uh, so that's important. What do we mean by having the right people? What do we mean by do we have the right culture? You know, is the culture open? Is it candid? Can you feel that you're in a trusting environment where you can exchange views without affecting uh, the mission of this organization? We can be, we can agree to disagree without necessarily being disagreeable. So do we, do we have that safe environment in which we can exchange views uh, and exchange perspective, the culture of give and take? What do we mean by the right issues? What exactly are the strategies and the priorities uh, that we have? Uh, and how are those points of views going to help us focus on what's really important, which is to maximize long-term value for the membership? I think that's the most important thing. When you look at everything you do and you benchmark against the strategy, what is it that we're trying to accomplish? And what, how much progress are we making? towards that ultimate uh, objective. And it's, it's a journey, it's you know, continuous improvement is, is a journey. Uh, do we have the right information? You know, we can get all kinds of data, but do we really have the type of information that can help us understand and inform our decision-making processes? Do we have too much information? Do we not have enough information? Do we have relevant information? Uh, are there other sources that we can consider? I think these are all the questions that are going to drive your self-evaluation when you ask these these questions, which will be part of the, uh, you know, of whatever survey we construct as we're part of this effort. Uh, do we have the right follow-through? You know, when it's all said and done, do we really have the type of follow-through action plan that is going to help us with continuous improvement? Because, like I said, you, 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 know, you have transparency, you have openness, you have independence, but how do you get to the next level uh, of in board effectiveness and board governance? And so these are the questions that are going to help uh, guide uh, that process. So the board self-evaluation in total at the committee level, uh, at the individual level, we're going to have the senior management looking, the perceptions that uh, there you go. The perceptions uh, of senior management, what, how do they see the board? How does the board see management? Uh, from the peer perspective, from your self-evaluation, what are the attributes that I bring to this board that are gonna help advance the objectives of the board? What, do we, you know, what are the strategic issues that I'm passionate about that can help support? Um, so this whole process requires a lot of introspection requires you to really think through, what do I bring? You know, to do a gap analysis. This is where we wanna be, this is where we're at. What, you know, how do we fill the gap? This is the knowledge and the skills that I bring. Uh, what additional skills and knowledge and anything else that uh, you feel you need, what do I need to get to develop so that I can be a more <coughs> effective, a, a more uh, successful board member? Uh, these are the questions that like, takes a lot of introspection to do these types of evaluations. But these are the questions that I think are really going to get at the core of any type of uh, outcome that is going to be advancing. You know, I've um, worked with a lot of uh, organizations, and oftentimes this process is seen kind of a conformance, you know, kind of check the box. Let's just get it done, and mm. everything is excellent. You know, I look at the, <laughs> everything, oh, we do this great, we do this great. Well, how do we do self-improvement this way? How do we continuously drive, and we know we need to do that. Uh, so we have to be honest. It has to be a very honest and open and candid process in order to extract the information that we will need uh, to become a highly effective, high-performing uh, board. 
Um, so that's, that's important. How do we identify the gaps at the board level, at the committee level, at the, uh, at the personal level, individual contributor level, as well as the relationship between the board and management? What's needing, what's not needing? And there are all kinds of examples that uh, can help advance or can affect. Uh, but I think this process really tease, helps us to tease out what may be differences of opinion at this point that could become a risky situation, a potential issue down the road. So if you, if you tease out whatever gaps and differences exist, I think it's important to do it in a process where you can address it and you can mm. become much more effective that way. So that's, that's part of this information, this process. So this is what NACD, this is, uh, as I mentioned, uh, the overall process of the evaluation. Uh, we will have to tailor it uh, for your unique circumstances, but this is typically how it goes. So we're in stage one. We're gonna do the planning and the survey development or whatever we wanna call it. But this is NACD's um, approach, as I said. Uh, so at this point, uh, I'm going to be talking with a number of you, your designated representatives, with management, uh, looking at what are kind of the areas that we really want to probe on, what are the strategic priorities that you have, and how can the tool of an evaluation help support and identify the opportunities you have for continuous improvement. So that's the first phase, looking at uh, the planning, the development, what are the constraints that you have in terms of your governance structure, your way that uh, you operate. All of those factors have to be taken into account during the initial, uh, the initial process. The second phase uh, of the typical process is, you know, provide some sort of a survey or have some interviews or just have one-on-one -on -one these conversations that are going to help <coughs> inform NACD and me in terms of what you think. What do you think are the opportunities that we have here from a personal perspective as an individual contributor as well as a committee member as well as a, a full board member and relationship with, with management. So that's the second stage of the process. And then of course, we'll be looking at the information identifying what are the trends, what are the, you know, what's the information telling us uh, where we need to have some focus areas. Uh, that's the third uh, part, and you know, again, data collection, whatever that means, is just, uh, is just a way of saying we need to capture your thinking uh, through conversations uh, in order to, to get that valuable information, and then we need to look at the trends uh, and work with you in identifying uh, what, what are the trends that we need to, uh, uh, to, uh, to highlight and to showcase? And then the final component is a uh, discussion of uh, recommendations, of the conversations, whatever you want to call it, but uh, the result, the conclusion, the result of what we consider to be important uh, as you uh, work, as you strive to improve your, your effectiveness uh, as a full board. So that's, that's sort of, it's an easy, I mean, there's no cookie cutter approach to an evaluation. It's an easy process. Um, and uh, NACD has a lot of experience, but there are other tools that, that are, uh, you, know, you may have used in the past that may have been equally as effective. But again, I think what's important here is understanding that the whole purpose of this is really to make the board more effective, mm. more higher performing, which in turn will deliver better results for your membership. That's the bottom line. Yes. No, this is, uh, yeah, so the, the self-evaluation questionnaire, again, this is a structure format. It's a standard set of questions that NACD has put together drawing under 40 years of experience. Uh, questions are phrased in the form of a statement, but Again, I'll be working very closely with CalPERS in looking at uh, how we want to structure mm. this process. But the most important takeaway from this is that we have to talk with you. Say, okay, what's working, what's not working, what, what uh, uh, from a self-assessment perspective, what do you think uh, may be some ways uh, of improving uh, the process? And taking into account uh, the, uh, any additional circumstances that would drive the construct of this conversation, of this exchange. Thank you. 
doing some. Uh, I think the it's um, the controls are actually over here. So if you point, I can do this. Oh, okay. I have it. I have a new job. <laughs> it's the, uh, there we go. Okay, so this is an example of the way that the typical NACD process that takes place. There's, there's two scales, it's the effectiveness scale and it's the uh, important scale. Uh, and so the effectiveness, now, let, let's say there's a statement that comes in this uh, questionnaire, the survey, that could read something like, collaborating with management on strategy development with a focus on long-term value creation. That's the statement. Okay, so then you're posed with a question, of effectiveness. If you rate it as excellent that you do, that means that uh, you have a very effective level of cooperation with management. Nothing really needs to change because it's excellent. If you, if you say it's great, it means, you know, for the most part it works, but we may have an area or two that we could do better on. It gets too good, then there may be a few more opportunities on how to ask to how you would rate it. And of course, fair and poor just really dictate that uh, this, is, uh, this is certainly something that needs significant improvement. We have to fix whatever the issues uh, might be. So that's how you would rate the effectiveness. In terms of importance, everybody, we all think whatever we do is important. So I think the important scale typically shows up as very important. But you have to think of the important scale as saying, okay, if this particular statement is really important, how much of my personal time, of our board time, of our committee time, are we devoting mm. to this particular area? And you'll notice there'll be significant gaps because you get a lot of very important ratings on, on a particular statement, and then we find out that there really isn't a whole lot of time being devoted uh, to that particular activity or that particular task. So in this context, one has to think of importance in terms of the investment of your time and energy and intellect towards that particular uh, activity. The, um, the NACD survey, there, there are five... Go to the next. Actually, yeah, right before that, this is one of the modules. There are five different uh, modules that are included in the sort of uh, the survey that, that we present, the template that we present. Uh, there's a whole section on board composition that has to do with the roles and responsibilities of the board, with the structure uh, uh, the, of the committees, with the leadership, uh, diversity, skill sets, uh, how you go about recruiting board members, which again would have to be adapted to your uh, uh, circumstances. Uh, then there's a whole module on board processes and operations. That is, gets to the agenda setting, the board calendars, and all of those components. There is another module on talent uh, oversight and succession planning uh, with the culture and CEO performance. Uh, there's one on strategy, and this is a sample <coughs> question module on, on the strategy piece. Uh, and then there's one on risk management. And so again, these are the five modules that NACD has found to be extremely effective uh, for, uh, for high-performing boards. But working with CalPERS, we can, we can uh, customize that and make sure that it is responsive uh, to your needs. So yeah, so this, this is some of the question. I, I think I used the first one, collaborating with management on strategy development with a focus on long-term value uh, creation. So you rate it how effective you think you are versus how important you think it is. Mm -hmm. And then the next question, the next... Uh, so can move to the next oh, one. next slide. Yeah, that's okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, okay, so this is a visualization sample of what we talked about. So we just talked about strategy development, uh, and in this particular example, it indicates an average level of effectiveness versus the importance that you attribute to that particular activity. So there's a significant gap here between how effective you are versus how important it is. It's, it's important, but you're not, we're not really spending as much time on it as we can. You look at uh, management collaboration or external stakeholder engagement, you see that it's a much closer relationship between the effectiveness and the importance uh, of the activity. 
So this is an example of how the data, the information, uh, the conclusions that we get from the, the collection of interviews or the collection of impressions uh, will, will help us sort of fine tune uh, the areas of focus uh, for the board. And there. Yeah, so uh, again, to emphasize, uh, a lot of the work will be done through telephonic interviews, maybe some personal visits with you. Uh, however you think it's important for us to, to gather this information, it'll be done without attribution. It's just a fact-finding kind of impression finding. So there won't be any attributions, uh, totally confidential, which is one of the benefits of having an independent outside uh, facilitator help you, which is a, uh, one of the leading practices. Now more and more organizations are using outside uh, facilitators for this process because it doesn't have the chilling effect that some perceive as it having when it's done internally and through people that you work with and know every day. And Right, and then of course, uh, the, at the end of all that, we'll have a discussion, a conversation of what uh, the conclusions, what the perceptions uh, might be, uh, and we'll share with you some best leading practices, uh, again, using the tools that NACD uh, have provided. The timeline is fluid, but this is an example of how it might work. July 18th, we're here. This is to just to walk you through the process. Mm. Uh, after that, we're gonna be working very closely with uh, your self-designated representatives from the board as well as with management in, in trying to, how do we structure this? You know, what, what is the best approach for your particular organization? Uh, and we hope to work on that through August uh, and October. Uh, and then in November and December, try to put together some sort of uh, uh, overview, uh, feedback to share with you uh, and with uh, the board. And, uh, and then in January to meet again and to see uh, what types of uh, takeaways might be helpful for your self-improvement, continuous improvement uh, effort. This could take us beyond January, it could be March. I just, I want to, you know, this is just an, a, an example of how it typically works. I don't want to uh, uh, say it's gonna happen this way because there may be certain opportunities that would, uh, would dictate that we, we continue to do some work uh, in other directions. So that's pretty much how the process works. At this point, I think what's important, Madam President, to take any, any questions. Thank you very much, Ms. Dominguez. Any questions comes from the board? Ms. Hollinger. Yeah, it's, it's more like a comment and I just wanted to say I was so impressed by the lean and the performance management that's being used at CalPERS that I feel mm -hmm. now the pressure is on the board to keep up with staff. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we all know um, good governance elevates performance, including financial returns for long-term sustainability. So our engagement requires us to look at other companies where we have very high expectations of performance, including governance and behavior. So I'm really looking forward that, to this opportunity to take a hard look at how we govern ourselves, how we relate to one another, and to senior management and staff. And so I would just encourage my fellow board members to use everyone's best thoughts to talk one-on-one -on -one and for us to be open and transparent. And I was thinking about this a lot and I thought maybe one of the thinking that needs to go into our mindset is if we could design this from scratch, would we design it the same way? How we determine our committees, our meetings, our skill sets, compensate compensation for board members, is it in a line with, me, with the outcomes uh, we want to achieve? So um, Carrie and Anne, um, mm -hmm. I'm really looking forward to this and um, I'm just very encouraged and uh, applaud the, my fellow board members for taking this on. Thank you, Ms. Thank, thank you, and I, again, I do emphasize that point. I think uh, what we put in is what's gonna come out, so it really is your, your evaluation. 
Thank you. Mr. Slayton. Uh, thank you, Madam President. Um, well, as, as a student of governance, I, I can't be more excited about going through this and, and this process. And we've done this before, uh, sometimes with good success, sometimes with maybe a little less than, than we wanted. Uh, I think one of the biggest challenges that we have as a group is we have a long history of the way we do things. And I think that's the biggest thing we have to overcome mm -hmm. is, well, this is the way CalPERS does it. And if we can let loose of that and essentially start with a blank sheet of paper to say, how should we organize ourselves? Mm. How should we interact with management? How should the committees be organized? What kind of documentation should we get? What would work best? And it doesn't mean that we necessarily would change everything, but if you don't start with that open mind, mm. then you're, you're not gonna be as successful as you might otherwise be if you're willing to start thinking from a fresh sheet of paper. So I encourage all of us to try to do that. And I think that, you know, I, I believe in wisdom of the crowd. And we have a crowd of 13. <laughs> and, uh, you know, we should be able to come up with things that will improve. Because at the end of the day, what we will go through is exactly what we are asking every company we own to do the same thing. So if we are asking them, then we should be doing exactly for ourselves what we ask them to do. So thank you and look forward to the work. Thank you, Mr. Slayton. Mr. Miller, did you have something? Well, I had things to say, but I guess I'll just say uh, you know, what she said, what he said. <laughs> <laughs> Terrific. <laughs> Ms. Taylor. Um, so I want to thank Anne and Carrie for the presentation. I'm looking forward to this. Um, I can't call myself the new member anymore. But uh, having been a new member and knowing how much there is to learn, I think that uh, this would be really advantageous to our new members, to the board, um, and starting from scratch like we're talking about, like, uh, Dana talked about and like Bill talked about and being open to doing things a new way I think is is very advantageous to making sure that we cultivate our leadership skills in the best way possible mm. and and bring along our new board members because I will tell you when I first got on the board I was so lost <laughs> <laughs> um, so I think even for myself, I think there's much I can learn and continue to learn and, and develop. And so I'm looking very much forward to this and, and hope that we come up with a stunning new way of doing things here. Mm, terrific. Thank you. Any other questions or comments from the board? Well, I think you can hear the enthusiasm and the desire to really um, take this on in a substantive way. and improve our processes, be the best board that we can be so that we can truly deliver value, as you, the word you used, and I think it's a good one, um, to our members, uh, which is really what we're all here for. That's the mission of the organization. That's the mission of this board. So uh, I know there's a lot of work to be done uh, over the next several months, and mm -hmm. this board is, I'm sure, up to the task. So Great. thank you. Thank yeah, you, Mr. So Meath. Thank you very much. I think this is um, on your uh, on your scale of importance for me. Of course, I would say yes. This is at the top <laughs> because um, the leadership and the governance of any organisation, to the extent we improve, the extent that we learn and do better, it really will have huge impact on Calper's own ability to deliver value. I think Harry said it so well. So. We're looking forward to um, Carrie working with us and really learning a lot and bringing fresh ideas from everyone. The, the wisdom of the crowd of 13, I like that very much. Um, so thank you. Terrific. Thank you, Madam President. Thank, thank you. you. So we are quite a bit...